Hey, everybody. Happy New Year. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with you all. Thanks all for joining. I gotta wait for this thing to work. Make sure I have volume. You never know if it'll be a good sign if I do have volume. Volume. Ah, there you go. <laughs> it is. Things are working out. So uh, this may sound like a little bit of hopium. And the title of the video is Reasons to be Optimistic. And I know I don't want people to go crazy thinking, oh, no, no. But the, op the inspiration for this video did come from the Blockworks. And they wrote a piece why there are so many reasons to be bullish and optimistic in 2023. And this is going to be an action-packed video. Again, first of the year. I thought it would be a quiet news day, but there's so much to share. So let's go. And first of all, before I jump in, Happy New Year, everybody. 2023 will be better than 2022. 2022 was <laughs> a rough year, to say the least. And remember also, health as well. So wishing you all a healthy and prosperous and joy-filled, fun-filled, education-filled year. So let's go. And of course, speaking of education, this is edutainment. And the story, as I mentioned, I let the cat out of the bag. Reasons to be optimistic. The first reason, let's go. This is the Bitcoin yearly trend, probably the simplest chart I've ever showed in my life. And <laughs> will 2023 be another up year for Bitcoin? The answer is, well, history repeats. More often than not, 2011 up, 2012 up, 2013 up. You can see 2014 down, 2018 down, 2022 down. Boom. What's going to happen in 2023? Aha. Uh -huh. We'll see. But uh, obviously, things cannot, cannot get worse, as they say. Now, a little bit of unicorn and rainbow news. This are some of the seven reasons to be bullish on crypto from Blockworks. Let me pull up the article. Make sure I get them all in order. One, I think it was the Ethereum merge. It went very well. It was a huge success. And now Ethereum is on proof of stake. Da -da. And that is the underpinning of all things decentralized finance on the crypto in the cryptoverse. Second reason to be excited is Elon Musk plans to integrate crypto onto Twitter. All right, this is a big, big deal. I've been talking a lot about the merge between social networks and cryptocurrency, blockchain, etc. This is huge. I was hoping it would have come from Jack Dorsey, but no, Elon Musk is now in control and he is firmly focused on his X plan. Number three, I think Larry Fink stayed bullish on crypto and crypto technology, which is huge. Number four, Goldman Sachs is eyeing opportunities in distressed crypto assets and companies right now. Think Grayscale, DCG, a ton of other companies, BlockFi, etc. And number five, probably the most important thing, and I'll zoom out for this one, uh, self-custody went mainstream. People figured out the importance of keeping stuff on their wallets, and they did it fit, fast, and furious, especially during the crunch time. Once bitten, twice shy as people go forward. So that was good. Um, but I remember the amount of emails and calls you get. So what do I do? How do I do it? We pointed them to our playlists and told them, you know, even if people could not wait three days for Amazon, we urged them to go to a reputable store like Best Buy, make sure the packaging is all intact, get your key. And everybody did that. And that was also visible from the amount of drainage from uh, exchanges like FTX, all in very short windows of time. And uh, let me see, where were we? So that was self-custody. Then there was um, venture capital dollars. Love them or hate them. They kept coming in, especially in new areas. And uh, number seven, probably the second most important thing after self-custody is the cryptoverse was cleansed of bad actors. Not fully. There's probably a couple lingering, but most of the bad ones are gone. And also, since the bad actors are booted, Hopefully, people will not be fooled again, uh, including myself, by people who appear to be trustworthy. Remember, trust nobody. All right, this will be a cleaner, safer space as we go forward. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the venture money. This is the Metaverse fundraising. Obviously, Metaverse is big. Appreciate you, Anderson W. You rock, sir. That's good seeing you this morning, too. Um, and I got your challenge as well. But speaking of venture dollars, uh, this is some of the metaverse fundraising. And it's going heavily into infrastructure first, then CFI, 
which is centralized finance. That took me by surprise, you know, metaverse, web three, decentralization. And then we have centralized finance popping up there as number two. But hey, it's got to, you know, you got to crawl before you walk and run, etc. And then web three, uh, big one. So again, we'll see what happens in 2023. Again, the Goldman Sachs of the world and the big money center banks are circling like sharks to pick up very cheap distressed assets. Again, good thing. Um, next thing as well, uh, Pivot coming in 2023. At least everybody thinks this. Bank of America, believe it. Barclays, Citibank, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, MUFG, NatWest, RBC, Societe Generale, uh, TD Waterhouse. They all believe a pivot is coming with the exception of Goldman Sachs. They believe the rates will stay higher for longer. The question is, we'll see who's right. But Goldman Sachs is pretty outnumbered there. But they're also the shark swirling, looking for deals. So let's see what goes on. Maybe, maybe, maybe they want rates to stay high. So there's more distress. They can buy assets cheaper. Who knows? Let's look at exchange volume. Again, a very unusual year for exchanges. Uh, this is the what they call the legitimate index from the block. And it looks at spot volume markets from legitimate exchanges, not ones that carry on with those sorts of tomfoolery, but they are the largest and most trustworthy exchanges from a perspective of reporting and data and volume metrics. And what you can see here, exchange volume is at a two year low, which is pretty stunning. Nobody was active. And part of this, I tried to find out why. Obviously, you know, you'd expect a lot of kind of wash trading, you know, loss taking and stuff, stuff that I have done in the past couple of days. Michael Saylor did it too, but it didn't happen. And maybe, just guessing here, it's because people are all self custodying stuff and they're terrified of exchanges. So everybody's off of exchanges and just holding on to their bags as they can. So we shall see. Um, next, another piece of good news, and I love real world use cases in crypto. And this is a new one. It's basically the first blockchain powered reinsurer gets a funding boost. Now, RE is the name of the company, and that stands for reinsurance. And that is the insurance of insurance companies. So it sounds a bit complex, but insurers to stay liquid need to put off some risk to reinsurers who have them backed up. Now, this platform is built on Avalanche with private information kept on a subnet. And the plan is to mimic a marketplace that has evolved over the course of the last 350 years to something they believe is a stable configuration for the current insurance market participants. So again, this is an exciting time. Another area of where things can actually move towards blockchain. It's only a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen, and an exciting time to be alive. And it's a good plug as well for Avalanche as they go forward. Next, speaking of another two-year low, Ethereum transfers hit a two-year low. Boom, it's like, whoa, we're back to January 2021 levels. Nothing is happening. Again, just like exchanges, blockchains are grounding to a halt. So we'll see, is this the calm before the storm? Historically, it can be. Um, next is Binance versus the crypto market. Now, this is an interesting one from uh, Matt Highland, I think. I'm almost positive. Um, but what this does is basically looks at the BUSD market cap. And typically, it's seen increases in the past few times. BNB and the crypto market has seen corrections, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens now because the BS, BUSD, the Binance stablecoin market cap is seeing severe pullback ever. And so is the Binance token. But again, is this the calm before the storm? Is this a correction or just a lack of overall confidence with exchanges out there in the marketplace? In addition, BUSD, has it been drained or has the bloodletting stopped? According to this on-chain report from Glassnode, you can see the number of exchange withdrawals in the hourly chart have kind of slowed down a lot considering how much it was around 12th to the 15th of December, just two or three weeks ago, where everybody was just pulling out hand over fist. That's a little bit of crypto news. Let's switch gears for a second. A big shout out to Gary Black. I did tweet him. Uh, a couple of days ago, 
And I spoke about the mega pack business for Tesla, something that analysts aren't taking into account at all, and how Lathrop in California can now ramp to 10,000 mega packs a year. And according to the CFO of Tesla, they have the batteries for the first time ever to build them. And these things sell for 800,000 to 1.5, 1.6 million dollars a pop with 50% margins. And the numbers are crazy when you crunch them. So uh, Gary's going to be adding this to his Excel, his spreadsheet as we go forward. And his price target for Tesla is still 400 bucks over the next six to 12 months, considering it's trading at 120 right now. That is kind of impressive. But again, the whole thing is exponential and nobody can wrap their heads around it. Let's talk more. This is Tesla Q4 deliveries from Dan Ives. He says 415,000, 420 would be solid. And uh, we should get a news release in the next 24 hours. And a big thank you as well to Sanjay for sharing this. And he believes 2023 could be 1.8 million deliveries. I think it's going to be a lot higher as we go forward. Now, let's go to Troy Teslike for the first time in a while. And this guy is on the money when it comes to deliveries. You can see here his forecast. He turned up the volume for Tesla Q4 deliveries above that of Wall Street. Wall Street's tanked in the toilet, just like the sentiment and the stock price. But he has ramped up his uh, production expectation from 413,000 to 423,000 in Q4. Either way, it's massive, massive growth, massive increase. And to put Q4 growth in perspective, look at this. And this is what people grapple with. You know, Q4 2021 was 300,000 vehicles. Now we're looking at 420, 425, maybe 430,000. Again, it may not be that full 50% quarter over quarter, Q4 to Q4, but it'll be big nonetheless. And again, two huge gigafactories are just ramping up, Texas and Berlin, just getting started. Um, and again, another reminder of what exponentiality looks like and for people to get their heads around. And one of the reasons we stress this, like we see reinsurance, one of the most conservative old-fashioned businesses coming to blockchain, it's going to disrupt everything, just as I believe Tesla is too. So this is a comparison. Down the bottom, you can hardly see it. Film cameras, negligible volume. Digital cameras, 8.4 million uh, was the uh, unit sold per year. And smartphones, 1.433 billion. The rest is history. This is stuff that I want everybody to try and really relate to and understand. There is no analog with complete disruption. Everything is different. Um, going forward, let's talk about a little bit of Europe. Good news out of Europe at last. Yay, Team Europe. I know a lot of you are there live in the, in the audience right now. Euro inflation is now expected to be slowing to single digits. The yellow is still the highest as Italy. France is doing well. Germany is coming down, hopefully, to 9% and change. And the whole euro area is under 10, which is extremely good. Again, they had a bit of a shock for a while, but some of the work maybe the ECB and Lagarde, etc., are doing is working. Sadly, however, the United Kingdom is still in hot water. According to Trueflation, they are still north of 20%. I am hoping the Trueflation numbers are wrong, but I feel they are not. This might be some of the problem of not being part of the EU they're, ex they're you know, suffering much higher expenses all across the board. And speaking of inflation, how much have prices increased in the USA in 2022? Here is a quick cheat sheet. Obviously, food on average is up about 10.6%, energy 13%. All other items, excluding food and energy, about 6%. But when you drill into some things, and this is a total head scratcher for me, food at elementary schools and secondary schools up 254%. How is that possible? Uh, I don't even know. Fuel oil, 65%. Eggs, 50%. Airline fares, 36%. Butter and margarine, wouldn't touch this stuff, but 34%. And on and on, you can see smartphones got cheaper. Beef and veal got cheaper. Clothing, 3%, way under average inflation. But just some interesting numbers to look at on how the world will change going forward. Again, heading into 2023, I believe a recession is on the way and lots of households have to continue borrowing at higher rates to pay for basic goods and services. We've had our eye on things like delinquencies and credit cards and car payments. They are going to hit hard in 2023. So be careful of that, everybody. Um, unfortunately, 
things are going to come down, but just watch out if you are in that area. Now, next in the box is Long Turkey Short Russia. This is funny, uh, and a big thank you again to Sanjay for sharing. 12 months ago, Turkey seemed uninvestable. Now Russia is uninvestable. Uh, and now people are going long Erdogan, which means long Turkey, and shorting Putin. So I hope I don't get into trouble or whatever for saying that. But anyway, just data from Bloomberg. And in addition, speaking of the global macro situation, this channel is about sharing knowledge that impacts decision making for medium and long term investing. China population peaked. India is now the biggest country in the world. China population peaked at 1.426 billion people. India is now 1.428 billion people and growing fast and will grow to about 1.6, 1.7 billion through the year 2050 or so. This data is from The Economist magazine. But what's interesting to see is the amount and the lack of young people to redrive really the economy, whereas India does not have that problem. The whole demographic situation in China is terrible. And India is now a force to be reckoned with. It's only a matter of time before, hopefully, people like Tesla open a big gigafactory there too. And final note for today, everybody. Happy birthday, Charlie Munger. He is 99 today. Love him or hate him. The guy is a master. And he has his opinions about Bitcoin, calling it rat poison and stuff. But we still love him. To be able to rock and work so hard at 99 is... My hat is off to you, sir. Anyway, with that, hope you enjoy the KPM, the knowledge per minute. Hope you learned something. Smash a like if you do. Love you all. See you later. Bye. Happy New Year, everybody.